Deep in Marikina is the home of one of the country's top young chefs. When I say top chefs, one of the top pastry chefs in the Philippines who's only 31 years old. I'll introduce you to Miko Aspiras. Hey, it's Bangi. Thanks Hello. for inviting us. Thanks for having us over. Welcome Hello. to our home. This is my idol, Miko. Hello. Okay. Miko, as I mentioned, is one of the youngest mm. and the best pastry chefs in the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you. He is one of the youngest, but already one of the most respected and one of the most awarded pastry chefs in the Philippines. We've been invited to the Marikina home of Miko Aspiras. So today, I, I decided to bring in one of our pastries in Le Petit Souffle, in Mega Mall and in Century Mall. We make our own fresh croissant in, in store. I brought in already a prepared dough okay. for us to just bake. So, But I'll show you how to bake it properly. I mean, how I make it properly. I, it's my version and also we'll make a filling of pistachio cream with cream cheese uh, and also some fresh berries because we have that in season now. <laughs> so today we are not letting your imagination run wild. Yeah. We are actually uh, tempering it a little bit. Yeah. So this is one of your specialties at uh, Le Petit Souffle? The croissant, yes, it's yes. our specialty. Okay. But for today, for just for Let's Eat, um, I made a very new filling that I don't normally make but uh, I make it here at home okay. actually. Uh, and what I'm doing today is I'm not gonna measure anything. It's okay. just, just, I'm just, I just want to throw in uh, ingredients together and see if it works. <laughs> uh, this is from Le Petit Souffle. Okay. Uh, what we do in the store is we roll, uh, we roll it out already. We make the dough and then we just freeze them. Humidity plays a part in it. Yeah, uh, okay. while making the dough, because mm. you have to incorporate uh, butter in between uh, layers, layers and layers yeah. of dough, so you can't the butter can't melt. Okay. It has to be like chilled all the, the entire time. Okay? So it's very precise, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have here an egg white okay. and an egg yolk. So, so we're gonna make an egg wash. Yeah. So what does the powdered sugar do again? Yeah. It creates another layer of crust. Okay. Oh, because yeah, the right, sugar yeah. it melts, okay. it's it caramelizes, so yeah, there. So I, I guess that's done. It's up to you also, but I some, I, I personally prefer to put more. So I'm just gonna pop it inside the oven, 190 degrees Celsius. Today I'm just making a very simple uh, filling. I'm not, I'm not even gonna measure the ingredients okay. uh, but I'm in my head I, I want it to be smooth and creamy so I want uh, and probably an equal amount of each ingredient so except for the sugar so we have here cream cheese okay. uh, and then I have here uh, softened room temperature butter salted and salted. unsalted and then I have powdered sugar and then I have really good quality pistachio cream so I'll put all of the cream cheese and then I'll just put a little bit of powdered sugar and then I'll start whipping that. Okay. So what, what I want to see here is um, it has to be cream, uh, cream together. The, sh the powdered sugar and the cream cheese has to be light and fluffy. Okay. And that's when you know it's cream, properly creamed together. The specific filling, we just want it to be creamy and fluffy. Uh, if you want it to, to be whipped, you use a whisk. Okay. So, uh, at this stage, we can add the butter. And then, you see the butter and the cream cheese and the sugar are uh, coming together. So, uh, I have the pistachio cream here. Uh, it's, I, I'm just adding the same amount. This is what pastry cream serve me. Mm -hmm. Can I try? Pure pistachio cream. You've <laughs> got butter. You got cream cheese. Holy cow. So I'm actually just extending the pistachio cream. It's a very rich, rich flavor. Rich yeah. flavor. Yeah. Just like that. And that's done. I'm just gonna put it in a piping bag with a um, this is not a star nozzle. It's a it's more of a sun nozzle. <laughs> like I don't know what it's called, but it's number eight six seven.
So I just need to cut um, the croissant in the middle. And then we have our filling. It's like seashells within seashells. It's, that's, that's, uh, that's what I'm getting right now. Oh yeah, that's okay. And then the, the colors are totally complementary. You've got this almost avocado-like yeah. color. And then the brown, the golden brown of the croissants. And then we're just gonna top it off with fresh berries. Crazy looks gorgeous, man. Look at the, the colors. Okay, and then I have fresh mint springs from our garden. Okay. We grow this. So grow yeah. <laughs> we do. Mint, yes. That's it. And we're good. We're good. Yeah. So you can serve that for breakfast, Sunday brunch, or just to impress your friends. Can't wait to buy this. Or you can just buy it from me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This croissant is so good. I've always finished mine. So I would give Miko a chance to taste his own creation. Thank and, you. Uh, we slaved over. Yeah, thank and we have something more in the oven, but that's just for us. Try it. Tell me what you think. Of this? Of your own <laughs> of this. home brew. Because we did this for, for home use, so we were not as precise as we normally would be. Yeah, but I know, it, piece of I know I'm confident that it's going to be good because of the flavor combination. That's true. Feedback. <laughs> Judge um, yourself. It, it could use a little bit more pistachio, <laughs> but it's okay. Like It's very neutral. But all overall. Yeah, it's a good dish. Just see, where did this... <laughs> Start all of your, your your baking. I know in Obi Montessori. Mm, definitely in, right. from Obi. When I went to Obi Montessori, I realized that there's a whole like um, career in in pastry or in baking. This past year alone, Miko has been recognized by the Philippine Tatler and Forbes Asia. Dozens of awards in local and international culinary competitions. Miko is forever imagining, creating, and winning. You keep on getting all of these awards. How does how do you keep yourself grounded? I've been asked that question mm. a lot of times already. I just say I just do my best every day. So I, I just I just kind of uh, put myself in that scenario where parang I need to beat myself, like. Like what I've done in the past. What keeps you inspired? Because there's a lot coming out. Yeah, of inspiration for me comes mm. from a lot of things and places. Mm. I get it from the most obvious one is I guess traveling. Mm. Uh, but I mean, I just got that opportunity. I, I don't want to say recently, but um, it's not. It ha it wasn't there like from the start. So, um, but of course, traveling for me is very important. Uh, but I also get inspiration from reading books. Mm -hmm. I subscribe to a lot of uh, magazines from abroad. Miko and JV met 11 years ago back in culinary school. And last year, a decade after they met, they tied the knot in New Zealand. Theirs is a truly inspiring union, a true bond between two very successful professionals. I'm glad now that all of these things can be out in the open, that we, we don't mm. have to hide this, right? It wasn't always like that. Mm. Like, we just, between us and like his, um, my mom's family and his family, uh, we've been pretty much open, but mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't always easy. Mm. Like, especially for my um, industry, mm. uh, if you work in a hotel, it's a different scenario. It's not like all glam, it's all not, not glamorous. Is there a macho culture? Yeah, very mm -hmm. much until now. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I can say also that it's improved. Mm -hmm. When I was in the hotel, sometimes people say the reason why I create beautiful things, like things like this, is because I'm gay. Which is but ridiculous. Like, yeah. Now I think I can. I, I think I can. I have the power to uh, like influence people. I, I would do it. There's no such thing as perfect. But a true artisan will strive every day to come as close as possible. And this is how Miko Aspiras succeeds. He never stops trying. Maybe, like, a lot of people would say, nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's just an excuse. Mm -hmm. 
you can for me it's actually different you can be perfect at one point but you can never be consistently perfect because that's hard that's gonna make you crazy that's a challenge especially for you in pastry but you can tell yourself that you cannot reach a certain level because you can would you consider yourself a perfectionist yes But we Perfect about in that, my yeah. way, my own yeah. way. It's hard to achieve something na parang yung imperfectly perfect. Mm. It's not. I mean, if somebody else is, uh, somebody else would do this, maybe it's it looks weird for me. Not like yeah. If we're going to train the next generation of Filipino chefs, and I'd like to close with this. Yeah. What would you tell them? Because we are we are now on the world stage, mm. as you have. Yeah. And uh, what would you advise your the new people coming out, the new kids on the block, how would you tell them to treat or react to foreign chefs? Mm, foreign chefs? Yeah. Uh, okay. We have to be confident mm-hmm. of who we are as a, as a Filipino and as a person. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you don't need to be pressured by the term, like, I'm, you have to represent yeah. the Philippines. No, you, you have to represent yourself. You have to almost, like, think that you're at the same level as they are because That's what they want. What can young chefs learn from Miko Aspiras? According to Miko himself, it all starts with complete clarity on what's right and what's wrong in one's profession and in one's personal life. Always do the right thing. Thank you for this. And, uh, thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you.